Since I got the Roland BN20, I received a ton of messages about people who had the machine who haven't quite gotten it open. They need to learn how to prepare cut files as well. So in this video today, I'm here at the Roland BN20 and we're going to prepare some cut files. How you guys doing? My name is Stan Bakes from T-Shirt Side Hustle and I help you start T-Shirt businesses from home. Wherever you at? And like I said, we're going to prepare some cut files for the Roland BN20 for stickers, for a heat transfer, vinyl, print cut, whatever it is that you may need to do right after the intro. Okay, let's jump right into it, but before we do, you guys know what I need you to do for me. I need you to like this video, because it's free. I need you to comment on this video, because it don't cost you nothing. Last but not least, I need you guys out there to subscribe, because I know most of you guys watching this video aren't subscribed. Now, like I said in the intro, we are going to prepare cut files, but before we get into that, I want to just have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with you guys. We have to stop hoarding equipment. I got so many messages from people who don't uh, actually have their machine open after they purchased it and haven't been using it, you got to at least do me this one favor. And that is use the machine at least until you make your money back. It doesn't matter if you got the Roland BN20, the Roland BN20A, the Roland BN20D. You need to use that machine until you at least, at the bare minimum, make your money back. You purchased this machine for over $5,000. You should be wanting to get your $5,000 investment at least back into your pocket. And then you can move on to whatever else that there is. So with no further ado, let's head over to the computer and go ahead and prepare some cut files. I'm going to show you how easy it is. Let's get to it. All right, guys, so like I said a little bit earlier, man, we're at the computer now and we're ready to prepare a cut file. I'm going to do this in two ways, one with the vector file and one with the PNG when someone sends it in because we always don't have the vectors or the correct files that we may want. Uh, we're going to prepare some three inch stickers and you guys can take this and you can apply it to what it is that you need to cut. This is for stickers. This is for a print cut, whatever you need to do. This is pretty much how it's done. So let me go ahead now and jump into Illustrator. I'm going to go to file open. I'm just going to open up the Marathon logo. Listen, if you guys are loving the content that you get on this channel, go buy your supplies at Marathon Supply. That's your way of supporting the channel at no extra cost. You get all the same great supplies you can get everywhere else, but you can buy and know exactly where you're buying it from and how that money is being used, pouring back into the community. So let's go ahead in here. I'm going to grab my Marathon logo. All right, I got it here. Uh, I'm going to just first make a duplicate copy uh, of the logo because this is my actual original logo file. So I'm going to start with a fresh duplicate copy. I'm making two right now. I'm going to turn the top one off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select that actual file and I'm going to merge my Pathfinder. Uh, I'm going to unite everything in here and it's going to turn it all one solid color. What that pretty much does is going to give me my outline here for the cut file. So if you take a look, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and with the actual stroke selected, we're going to turn the color to our cut contour color. The cut contour color is pink. You can change this. You can redefine it. Uh, all of that stuff. I'm going to make another video and I'll link it up in the description showing you guys how to install Roland's uh, swatch file so you can have the proper uh, cut files. You can make your own, but it's easier to actually just use what they provide. I like to make my stroke a 0.5. The reason I do that is just because it's just it just looks better to me. All right. Uh, now, as you can see, if I zoom in really, really close with the original bottom layer on, I have a cut file there. I have the line. You can see it. Pretty much that is a cut file ready to go. Now, if your uh, machine is slightly off around the border because we have a solid border on this print, uh, you're going to want to have what we call a bleed, right? And basically what that is, is some color outside of the color to allow you to, uh, so allow the machine to have a little bit of leeway to kind of where it cuts and how it, uh, and how it looks when it's done. So with that being said, uh, there's a few ways you could do this. Uh, the way I'm going to do it is I'm actually going to go ahead and on my original file, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this color. I just want to select 
my actually no let's go ahead and do it this way i'm going to take this uh outline here i'm going to do object path offset path all right i'm gonna do that at uh let's go 0 0.05 let's see let me give a slim one let's see what that looks like all right so that's a real real slim uh stroke there on the outside i'm gonna click ok so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that and then with my eyedropper tool, I'm gonna select this gray and that's gonna pretty much give me a border of the gray, right? Now I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna drag that to that new layer and I'm gonna put that beneath both. So if you look closely now, our offset path, which is actually our bleed, we have our cut line and then we have our actual artwork. So now we have a little bit of leeway when it comes to putting that file into the computer. As you guys can see, I'm ready to go from here. The next thing I want to do is I want to adjust my sizing. So I'm going to grab all three of these. I'm going to transform. I'm going to make sure that it's linked here. And I'm going to say I want the width, which is the widest part, to be a three inches. And we're good to go there. Last but not least, I'm going to go to object, artboard, fit to select the artwork. And now we have it cut and prepared or not cut, we have our cut file set and we have it prepared to go directly to the cutter. Now, the way that I have this set up, I save it to a folder and I jump over to the PC and it'll automatically load through Dropbox. So I'm gonna show you guys just how I do that. I'm gonna go to file, save as, and then I'm gonna go to my clients and I have a sticker folder and then I'll save this in here as a PDF file. And I'll just put test in front of this. And once it's done, It'll actually pop up into the other computer and be ready and prepared for me to cut. All right, so now that we got this one all ready, the next thing we're gonna do is work with a PNG file. So for this one here, I'm going to use a different file. I'm gonna open it up and we're gonna use our build a brand Bando Bear, okay? So here he is, open that up. All right, now what I have here is my bear and I'm gonna duplicate this layer and what we're gonna do after that is we're gonna do an image trace. And all we're looking for on the image trace is that the entire image on the outside has um, a hard edge pretty much, okay? If you got something with lighter, you may have to play with it. You may have to do a full color. You can do a, a single color when you click it. You can do a three color, six color. All you want is for the entire image to be in color, okay? Uh, so now, uh, we're going to go ahead and click expand and from expand, we're going to click and we're going to ungroup it. Once we ungroup it, we're going to delete the outside so that now all we have left is the bear. From there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unite everything again from my Pathfinder tool. And this looks exactly like we had it before. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and we're going to release compound path, and then I'm going to click Unite again. That is a quick way to clean up all of those little uh, dots in the inside. You could go in and remove them and all of that kind of stuff. The easy way is just to go ahead like I just did and then unite them again. So if I go back two steps, what I can do is click it. I can release compound path. And now when I click it again, it removes all of that stuff on the inside. So now what we have here so we got our bear and we can kind of tell and see that there's nothing there. All right. So from here, we can now go ahead and select this and we can create. I like to do it with a stroke. So what I'm saying to you guys is you want to create a stroke. So let's say if I'm printing this on holographic uh, paper, I don't really need the color border. So what I'm going to do here is object. Oh, I'm not even going to go object. I'm going to go and just start to increase the stroke on this. Click the stroke, I like the click in here. I like to make sure that it is a round edge and it's on the outside. And we're just gonna click the stroke and up it till we like it, all right? Now you see where it is, that's gonna be the border. And then once I have that, I'm going to go object, path, outline stroke, which makes it all an outline. So now if I turn this off, this is all outline. It's no longer a stroke. I can't use it, I unite it all. And then I release compound path and I do that there. We're going to swap it to have a stroke. And then we're going to change the color of the stroke to our cut contour color. And when I turn this on now, we have a 
border around it. Again, if you didn't want the border around it, you would create a tighter cut line with the actual offset so that way it's an area. This is how I'm printing most of my holographic stickers uh, when it comes to it. So now the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually select the actual stroke. And with that being said, I'm gonna to go to object, artboard, and fit to select the art. And now we have our cut file and I didn't size this, but you guys can size it however you want to or you need to. Right now we got it set for inches. So if I go to ruler, go to inches. And if I click off and go to document, and we set it to inches or set to inches. And now we can see from the transform, we are at a nine inch bear. Uh, we should print this out. What y'all think about that? Uh, maybe in another video. So pretty much that's two ways for you guys out there to prepare cut files. You can do it with a vector file. Really, really simple and easy. Sometimes you get some harder files, some PNGs. You just want to create a vector version of it by tracing it, then layering that over top of the old file and then create your lines out of that new file uh, or that new vector version. Rather, it doesn't have to be perfect for that. Keep it rolling, set your stroke, and now you can build from there. So if you guys have any questions or specific tutorials you want to see on the Roland BN20, whether it's in Illustrator or on the actual machine, make sure you put it down in the comments. I want to make sure everybody out there who has this machine, who hasn't unboxed it, who hasn't used it, is now using the machine to the full effect, getting out here and making some money and doing business. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This has been your boy Stan Banks with T-Shirt Side Hustle. Peace. The T-Shirt Side Hustle team would like to give a huge shout out to its contributing members.